No problem. We can uh, we can work through it if it becomes an issue. That's not too bad. Hey everybody, good morning. This is and welcome to Reaper Pro Tips. And today we are working with a paint. We're working with Succubus Kiss 9462. So uh, I warned you about this two days ago that I was going to be using this paint on the Dark Elf Cleric um, and kind of wanted to talk about how to use it because it is an unusual color and it has some unusual qualities. It's almost clear brightish. Not quite, but it is close. Um, good morning, Margaret, Anki, and Nomad Zeke, and Sentimental, and haven't seen you for a while, Sentimental, welcome back. Uh, Freestyle, and Androkrat, and Cooves, and Embers, and Megan, and Jay, and Image of Betrayal, and Janky, and Solison. Yay! Hi, everybody. Good. And D. Clearman. Yes, of course. So, sweet. And Fanity, I haven't seen you in a while either in chat. So, good. Good, good, good. We've got a full house today. Sweet. Excellent, 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 excellent. And Stephanie, yes. And Miss Imp, good. Lots of people. Halls of Stone, I have not seen you before. Welcome, if you are new. If you are not new, then I have, then, then hello and welcome anyway. <laughs> okay, Embers, good. I'm glad you like Succubus Kiss. Everybody loves the color, but it can be a little transparent, so it can be hard to work with, so we're going to work with that today. We're going to talk about a couple of ways that you can do deal with that. Let me see if I've got a nice red to work with. Let's work with Heraldic. Yes, morning or afternoon. Hi, Zewo. Hey, MCC. And Evelina. All right. Yep, Kiri is stretched out and ready to nap. It must be time to stream. <laughs> All righty, here we go. Let us go over to, let me deactivate face cam. My, um, my, uh, OBS is telling me that we're uh, dropping a couple frames today, so apologies for any stuttering. Hopefully we'll just get past it and the internet will behave itself. Switching. There we are. All right. Class is on. Let me make sure I can see you guys in chat so I can answer questions here. There we go. Super. So how is everybody today? I actually got some decent sleep, so I'm like, you know, peppy. Relatively peppy. And time. The internet is an untamed beast, Orion. Absolutely. Oh, but my glasses need cleaning. I really need to get like an actual dedicated glasses cleaning cloth at this point. I'm unused to this since I never have worn glasses like in a traditional sense, but I use uh, my reading glasses all the time when painting miniatures and it annoys me when they get foggy. There we go. It's a little better. Got your snow tires off the car. I should certainly hope so. It's May. I mean, you'd think you lived in Wisconsin or something at this point. Or Canada, where they get snow in July. <laughs> I forget. Are you out east, Margaret? Are you out on the east side of things? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, in New York. Yep, yep. You get the freakish, freakish spring weather. I'm familiar. Yeah, I used to go out in that area for dog shows. Actually, our national dog show for the Shiloh Shepherds was held out there because the breed founder created the, our breed out there. So her uh, her kennel was out there. She passed away back in 2011. But um, but yeah, we used to go upstate. It's beautiful country up there in the mountains. Um, just gorgeous country where you are. Hey, Max Styles, how's it going? Let's see. Let's do it in the middle here. Yeah, we always were there in um, August, and it was just glorious. Alrighty. So first, let's kind of show you what Succubus Kiss looks like. Because, um, you know, if you put it on full strength, this is a color that's very transparent. What it has in it is it's got a lot of magenta. It's got a little touch of black to give it darkness. 
and then it's got a touch of a cool red in it as well. So it gives you this great dark raspberry color, which you can see on the palette there. So it's, it's beautiful, but as you can also see as I'm brushing it, it's really transparent. So it is kind of clear brightish in a lot of ways. Uh oh, I got my water reversed. I had my uh, my drinking water where my paint water usually goes, and my uh, paint water with my where my drinking water usually goes. Not good. Uh oh. Yeah. Luckily, um, I have totally different uh, containers for these things, so I notice right away when they are in incorrect. So it's hard to miss that I have a Princess Unikitty Lego, um, you know, paint water cup, Lego movie. Uh, so. I am unlikely to uh, to drink from it, and uh, my uh, water is in my Yeti to keep it cold, so they're, they're, uh, happily there are no accidents with drinking paint water today. Let me get that off of there. All right. So, shorts or snow boots? Yeah, yeah. You dripped your brush and your margarita the other night. Oh, Stephanie. Well, you were drinking while painting. This is why friends don't let friends paint drunk. Unless you're painting plaid, then all bets are off. All right, let's see here. So if we try to put this down straight over our bones material, our bones black material, it's not bad. Like, it's it's you can see that it actually applies more like a heavy wash because it's so thin-bodied. And this is because of the pigments that are used. To get this color, you need to use magenta pigment, and uh, which is a very blue red. And the problem with magenta is, well, the big problem with magenta for our purposes is that it does not cover. It's got a very fine pigment grind. Hold on, let me get up here so I can get in focus. There we go. <clears throat> Hello, Ursa Minis, Tish. You drank the margarita anyway. <laughs> That's dedication. <laughs> yeah, usually, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't, I don't drink much anymore, so, uh, so I can't say if I would make that mistake today. There were definitely days where I, where I made that mistake in the old days. So, yeah, it's, uh, alrighty. So, so as you can see, it's really transparent. It's, uh, it's a lovely, lovely color, but it's very transparent because magenta is itself such a transparent pigment. And to create this color was very difficult because I had to keep the intensity of it. I wanted the saturation. It's a beautiful, deep, um, deep crimson color. But, oh, thanks, Coobs. I did it uh, Monday. So you can go back and watch the, watch the stream on Monday. I was having fun. Um, but I decided I would actually, people were asking what color I would do put with a bluish black armor and red is always the answer for me. Um, but Succubus Kiss is a little bit more of a unique red. So that's why we are talking about Succubus Kiss today. Uh, yeah, paint stayed on. <laughs> All right. So, and everything is drying very slowly today. I can tell it's that sort of day. So essentially the fact that we have to get this vibrancy of color means that we're loading a lot of magenta pigment into this paint. And I mean a lot, a lot. That's why I said this paint is very similar to a clear bright in a lot of ways. Um, cause it, it kind of lacks coverage a bit and it's also got that intensity of color, but this makes it a very versatile color, just like the, the clear brights are. Um, so, you know, straight out of the bottle, it might annoy you a little bit, but it also means that it's, it's got, you know, it, it has that intensity of color. You don't have to aim for it. Um, if you layer it up, it turns much darker once you can't see that uh, that lightness under it. I'm going to have to let it dry a little bit, though. All right, so let's just show you a couple other ways you can deal with this. So one way you can deal with Succubus Kiss, well, the really the way to deal with light colors like this, is to underpaint them. So to essentially mix it with white or even mix it with, like, I'm going to try Heraldic Red, um, and do that coat first and then put a coat of Succubus Kiss on over the top. So I'm going to use just one drop of Heraldic Red. And I'm using Heraldic because it is bluish and also because it's higher coverage. And then I'm going to try, say, three or four drops of Succubus Kiss. And this should give me a little bit more of a boost to my coverage. In the same way that adding um, a drop of Clear Red to a high coverage red will boost its color, but not impact its coverage very much. So it's the same sort of method. And for those who didn't know, yes, you can do that. Um, I'm also going to do one with white. White is going to give us a lot more coverage, but it's going to make us a lot pinker. Hey, planer. Hey, Zambies. So we're going to add a couple of different things to our Succubus Kiss to make it cover, or at least give it a little bit better coverage. And you can do this with any color. 
that is not a high coverage color, but you still want to to have it be, you know, you want to have it show as its color. Because you see now how's it, how this is drying. You can really see through it. So with any color like this, you could add a higher coverage variant of it. So like if you have a really transparent brown, you could mix in a drop of a different brown that's close, but that has better coverage. Or, um, or add a bit of white. And white is going to bleach it out, but it's just a base coat and you're going to put the original color over it anyway. So here... You can see this has taken me a bit more red, right? I've added um, one drop of heraldic red, four drops of succubus kiss, but I'm getting a little bit better coverage. So that could be the payoff for me. So if I do that here, still a little bit transparent. I could probably add another drop of heraldic. And keep in mind, I'm not thinning these. Um, I'm going full strength today just to illustrate coverage. So we'll add one more drop. A heraldic, which is again going to shift the color, but not too much. And we'll just, yeah, that's a little nicer. I am also using the wrong brush for this, so hold on. Everybody's got a lot of hellos. Hey, Malev, good to see you. Malev or Malev, I'm not sure. It's potato, potato. Speaking of potatoes, last night, Alpha and I were watching. Um, Salt, salt, fat, acid, heat, the first episode. Because I like the book. I own the book and I really love it. And oh my god, the ragu she makes in the first episode. Just makes you want to get up and make that recipe right then so you can have some. So I looked up this morning and she does have the recipe on her website. Which makes me very happy. And I may have to like go and buy tons of um, beef and pork and fat and uh, onions and stuff this weekend in order to make it. See, cooking shows don't necessarily make me hungry. They make me want to make things. <laughs> so as you can see, putting the red in here definitely gives us better coverage. And it doesn't change our color too much, which is key, because then when I put my second layer on, I'm going to use pure succubus kiss, and it's going to change it to more like this, but I got a nice higher coverage base coat down out of it. Um, Real Cheapy Army, uh, the salt, fat, acid, heat, if you haven't read the book, you should. It's a, possibly the most useful cooking book I've picked up in a very long time. Um, and they did a TV show on it, um, where she, you know, kind of takes you through the principles with a lot of, uh, delicious examples of food, um, from Italy sprinkled all over your, you know, in front of your eyes, making you want to cook Italian or go to, go to Italy, um, both sometimes. Uh, so she has, has, has an Italian ragu recipe, uh, that she kind of covers at the end of the first episode. And, uh, it's, it's great for me because I like Italian food, but I can't have tomatoes. So the only tomatoes that go into a ragu are actually just like some tablespoons of tomato paste. And I have a substitute for that. So it, it made me deeply happy because now I can make something, I can make a pasta sauce, and put it, you know, and, and make it in accordance with my diet and not have to change very much at all. So the flavor should be true, which makes me super happy. So as you can see, a second coat on the succubus kiss actually goes on pretty well. So you're going to be looking at, even then you can see a little bit, but you're going to be looking at two, two base coats for sure on this sucker. Um, if you want a, a nice solid base coat of succubus kiss. All right, let me see here. Just let me catch up. Happy <laughs> recipes paint. The book is fantastic, Real TV. Especially if you're like me, I have a great reading comprehension. My reading comprehension is much higher than my, uh, and retention is much higher than my listening retention. So for me, I need to read it to have it really stick in my brain. So, and yes, thank you Netflix for some awesome shows. Yay. Um, it's it's uh, actually my Crohn's disease trigger, Real TV, so it's even worse than an allergy. Um, can't, uh, can't have them. My system hates them. Uh, now we're going to mix up the white so I can show you guys how it goes. This is such a nice color. It's beautiful with red in it. It's beautiful with white in it. I accidentally put a little water in this, which I'm going to regret, but my white is probably going to help counter it. So let's do this one over here. Doo -doo. Oh, yeah, that's a little bit. Well, not too bad, actually. So just to give you an idea... This is covering, even though I accidentally added a brush full of water to it, just adding the white to this color made it cover immensely better. So that gives you an idea 
of how much um, mixing a pigment into your paint color can actually aid with coverage. And then I'm going to essentially put another layer of succubus kiss over all of this, and we're going to see if we can tell the difference. Yeah, it's just, I don't miss tomatoes. I just, I love it when I can find a, an ethnic recipe that's Italian that doesn't have tomatoes or has such, only has tomato paste because I have a sub. Uh, tamarind paste, for the record, um, is uh, a very similar flavor palette to tomato paste. And uh, once, once you, since you're really only asking for that tartness and acidity, it doesn't make a difference in the flavor. Um, cause really tomato paste is when it's, when it's the only tomato in a recipe is really just there for the acidity. So, uh, tamarind paste, I, uh, you can get it in a squeezy bottle and it lasts quite a long time in the fridge. All right. So now I think I'm almost dry and I can put a layer of succubus kiss over the top and we'll see if we can even do it. Yeah. It takes notes. Yeah. We'll love cooking notes and paint notes. Exactly. Yeah. So tamarind paste, yeah, it's, it's definitely not, it's not as sweet as tomato paste, but it has that same acidity and has the same tartness as tomato paste does, even a little bit more. So you want to maybe use a little less of it. But uh, if you have a recipe, like, like beef stews, for example, I love beef stews, but usually you want to put a little tomato paste in there because it really livens up the flavor for acidity and zest. Um, so instead I use a tiny bit of tamarind paste and it gives me the same result. In good beef stew. Good beef soup and beef stew, really, the secret ingredient is tomato paste or tamarind paste, if you're like me. Almost dry, almost dry, okay. And I'm getting a little thick here, so I'm going to put a tiny bit of water into my succubus. Tiny bit. Got to keep it at the correct consistency of base coating. There we go. So just because it was starting to dry out, I added a tiny, tiny bit of water on my brush, just so we can illustrate I mean, tamarind paste is really from, um, I think, I think it's from Thai cooking or Indian. It's Thai and Indian because tamarind is used a lot if written chutneys, especially. So essentially, um, there are tons of recipes, Indian recipes with tamarind paste, um, tons and tons. There should be anyway. That's where I discovered it. All right. So now we'll put a layer of succubus kiss over the top and see how this works. Boop, boop. And my pink is almost dry, and then we can put a layer of Psyche Biscuits over the top of that too. All right, so you can see that with my two layers of Succubus Kiss, I still have a bit of unevenness. I can see through it. But with the layer that where I did the, the two drops of red with four drops of succubus kiss, I can't. It's really solid. You can see that it's really solid. So that's kind of the trick to getting a nice rich color with your succubus kiss without any really additional effort. It's just like mixing just a little bit, uh, in this case, heraldic red, a high coverage red into your succubus kiss. And this is a bones color, so it does have a slightly higher coverage formulated that way. So we'll wait for our pink to get done. The pink is much lighter than the red, so it may turn out a little bit differently. So we'll see. We're almost dry. We're almost dry. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, tabletop. We do not do hashtag free on this, except uh, Justin and I are talking about actually doing some giveaways for the show, but only every... what? How many subs are we aiming for, Justin? And we, is it 50? Remember we were discussing the subs based on the... the uh, I guess the oh, thing we were right. going to get... Doing yeah. Well, okay. So let's uh, let's actually put it to a poll in our because we have a lot of our frequent listeners on here. So what Justin and I were thinking, guys, is to make to, to make giveaways manageable, but still do them for the show. Is that we would do giveaways as a special thing during AMAs. So since you all tune in to ask me questions and get answers and demos, um, we would essentially shoot for a slightly higher sub count to get an AMA, like maybe fifty or sixty, and then we would do giveaways during that AMA. So, and do, and we wanted to try to do some bigger giveaways. So the question is, um, would you guys like rather have to shoot for higher sub goal and get a big, a few big giveaways, or do you want more small giveaways? Like, I'm curious, tell me big or small, big with higher sub goal, small with smaller sub goal. Yeah, if you search for uses for tamarind paste, you should be on the on the thing. But a lot of it's going to be Indian, probably Chibi Army. Like big, all anything, big or small. 
Big giveaways, small giveaways, smallest fun, more chances to win, whatever is easier. Well, easier is a few big, usually, Chibi Army. Um, right, just... it makes less sense for us to do 10 one bottles of paint, even though that's probably what people would prefer. Um, that just puts more, usually more strain on the whole process, including the people that ship it. But, um, but I was curious. Really... I just like, yeah, I just like to ask. I like to ask the audience to see what they like. Um, and yeah, and we may still have to like, if like a lot of small giveaways also cost us a lot more shipping. So we have to keep that in mind. So it, it may be a few oh, bigs yeah. instead. So we have to, we have to all keep all of this in mind. That's true. Um, it definitely makes it easier. I forgot about that entirely. And it makes yeah. it easier to ship, uh, like packages of paint to someone across the world, basically. So we've got 10, 10 people voted. Got, we're still voting. Up, oh, up, oh, smaller, getting bigger. <laughs> the, the small people are getting bigger. Up, oh, now we're at 50. We're tied neck and neck. If we're tied neck and neck, then Justin and I get to choose. Um, but yeah, but it would be probably paint giveaways. We kind of waited to launch this because we wanted to do paint and uh, we knew how hard it was to ship. That's <laughs> platinum big, not platinum small. That's cute. Ah. Uh... I mean, we could just give away gift cards, but it's given... We're trying to make all the shows a little different, Hagar the Horrible. Um, does anybody else just give away gift cards? I think we do on our on our Discord, right, Justin? Uh, we That's all we do for Reaper Live now. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so that would just make it just like every other show, um, which is a little bit... Or just like our, our main show, I guess. So we're trying to like right. be a little different. This show is all about painting in general, unless I do a Terrain Tuesday. So that's why we wanted to do paint giveaways. Maybe some different combinations. Maybe I can come up with some alternate triads for things and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, so. to clarify, what we talked about originally was uh, Anne maybe coming up with a specialty like Anne combination of paints. Yes. Where however that many, however many that may be, like six paints or so. And then we would give away like, you know, maybe three or four of those, depending on the sub goal we set it at. And then we would give them away during the AMA. Yeah. So at the end of the day, if you guys kind of want like a, a paint kit created by Anne, that's a, that's some sort of specialty, that would be a vote for big, I would say. I would say the triads are probably more for small and we would give more of them away, maybe twice as many. Yeah. Um, but it just kind of depends. I mean, we, we like to run uh, polls all the time, like, today for instance we have uh, 80 people watching but we only have 25 people who voted so we'll probably do another poll again once we kind of figure out what we're looking at here right like once we have it dialed in but okay right and and Anne is also uh she's put she's racking her brain to kind of come up with a perfect set of paints for you guys yeah yeah so. exactly so every combo will have walnut brown margaret you're right or black and brown it's one or the other um uh triad that shouldn't work but totally does look like it looks like um I gave this one out on my Patreon, Andre, but I'll give it to you anyway. Uh, but a really cool female skin tone triad is uh, Bright Skin Shadow 9232, 9068 Rosy Skin, and uh, Peppermint White from the uh, the Bones expansion. I can't remember Peppermint. It was a holiday paint set. That's right. Peppermint White from the holiday paint set. That's a triad that like you wouldn't normally like you know throw together, but it works amazingly. It does an incredible female skin tone. Um, no, actually not really Paul John's life because when I moved, I really pared down my collection. Um, I really, really eliminated a lot of colors from my regular paint uh, scenario, which is coming back to bite me now that I want to do a PDF on uh, colors that I may or may not have with me. Um, so we're putting a layer of Succubus Kiss now down over the pink. And surprisingly, you can see that it actually works pretty well. It maybe doesn't give us quite as good uh, of a coverage as the red because the red was a lot closer to the succubus kiss, but it still gives us a nice solid base coat, more solid than the original putting two succubus kisses down. And it isn't, once it dries, it probably won't be much of a different color than the red. So you can choose what you like. It is a little bit pinkier because you've got that pink undercoat. Um, so if you want a richer red, you know, you can see that the, the red variant probably gives you a slightly richer red. Um, uh, Max Styles, uh, are you not, I don't, I don't want to like give out free, like give out too much info from the Patreon, but you can go back and watch this. So it would be Bright Skin Shadow 9232, Rosy Skin 9068, and Peppermint White, whatever color that is. I started using it over the holidays and really adored it. And it's in, uh, I did a PDF on, uh, holi the holiday colors, like all of them, 
giving triads for all of them um, on my Patreon. I think it was a $5, $5 PDF and it was probably uh, last year, November or December, um, right around the holidays, obviously. So, uh, so if you are on my Patreon and you're a $5, uh, person, go there, download it. It's actually, I think one of the best PDFs I've done. So it'll give you not only uses for the holiday colors, but also triads for them. Um, and, uh, the other thing I was, I was, I was on a, on a roll and then my brain just canceled out. Ah, I thought I had enough coffee, caffeine this morning. Maybe I should have had David make me a latte after all. All right. So we're just going to put an extra coat then of Succubus Kiss. So you can see then that it takes three coats to cover with Succubus Kiss, even unthinned. But if you just add a little bit of a higher coverage color, either heraldic red or pure white, for example, um, you can get high coverage in two coats. So you're good. So let's see here. Now for doing highlights on Succubus Kiss. Now, obviously... If we add white for our highlights, we are going to get this. And if we add red, we're going to get that. So it's really what you want to do with your succubus kiss. You could also try adding some purple. Let's actually do that. Let's let's do some variants on our succubus kiss. Because remember, succubus kiss has magenta in it. So that means that purples, which are built off of magenta, can be naturally great highlights for it. Let's actually go with more, a bit more saturated. Where is my... Yes, runic glow, the color I keep bringing up. If you haven't all bought it yet, you know, we can also go with runic purple. These two are, are cousins and uh, runic glow makes a great highlight for runic purple. Thus the runic, just so y'all know. Those numbers are 9424 9, and 9320. The glow colors are generally useful anyway because they make nice saturated highlights. So let's see, let's do, let's do both. Never enough caffeine. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm limiting it, too. Uh, one-on-one -on -one tutorials I actually um, do on my web, on my Patreon, Hagar. Uh, and it's not really, we're not really set up to do that here on um, Twitch and Reaper. So it's a, it's, a, it's a thing that I tend to do on my off time. Um, and uh, I'm actually about to set up, like, a, an email coaching tier on my Patreon. So let's see here. We got three drops of Succubus Kiss, one drop of Runic Glow. Ah, oh no, two drops. Well, my Runic Glow got really excited and it really wanted to be in this tutorial. So it decided to uh, take over. And then let's try, I might add two drops of the purple actually to see how it shifts. There we go. So, all right, three to two. Let's mix those up. Yeah, drown and pull pink. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Succubus Kiss is, is a pretty color. I mean, and it's a great base. Uh, it's a great shade for red, too, as you will see shortly, as I will use it to shade um, a couple of different reds as we get further into this. Now, this is a very pretty pink. Um, Runic Glow. You can see that it's more saturated. By saturated, I mean intense. I actually did a PDF also on that. I may as well give the Patreon plug now. Patreon.com slash painting big, uh, just like um, my logo on the uh, starting screen uh, is my Patreon. And, uh, I love it because I, I have time to go in and go in depth on things with PDFs with there. And I also do do videos. I do a video tier, um, and a couple PDF tiers. So, and a paint along tier. Uh, so yeah, all of that. And yes, and I love, I love the people. So many of you have, uh, have become my patrons and it really means a lot to me because, uh, when I moved out here to be with David, um, the Patreon is my main source of income. So it's like the thing that's the thing that buys Kiri Kibble. Uh, <laughs> so I really am really grateful for you guys uh, who are supporting me. It means a lot to me. All right. So you can see that going with the darker color here, let's put these here so you can see the difference. So little did you know you were going to get a color mixing class on Succubus Kiss, but that's the way it rolls. So You've got a darker color here with more blue, and that's what you're seeing exactly when you put it in. This is a really kind of neat purpley red, though. I like this raspberry color we're getting. Oh, thanks for the um, thanks for the plug, Zebo, on the Anne's Patreon. Uh... Well, I mean, the holiday kit is obviously going to give you unique colors, but um, as far as it goes, I mean, Pathfinder colors would be a good set, real chibi, but it's big, right? 
So it depends on if you're going for a little set or a bigger set. I would say holiday colors give you some some variety. There's some there are a couple of unique colors in there, but that the Pathfinder colors might give you a little more utility. But then it's also a bigger set. Like I've been um, talking a lot about the Pathfinder figure uh, Pathfinder colors on this stream lately, and I also just did a a, two, a PDF for my Patreon on them um, about some of the weird greens because there are some really unique greens and reds um, in the Pathfinder line, and also some nice metallics. Uh, and some nice skin tones. I mean, there's a lot in Pathfinder that I think people kind of roll over because they're like, oh, it's a Pathfinder paint line. How different can it be? And some of the colors are going to be a lot like, like Sione Red is going to be a lot like any other bright red, but there's just a little difference. But then there are also really unique colors like Urgothoa Red and Amadeus Red or Asmodeus Red that are uh, really, really unique and uh, great colors and have be fast becoming part of my regular lineup. In fact, and when I'm putting together this um, giant, you know, Anne's set of colors that are awesome, um, I can almost guarantee that Asmodeus Red will be in there because I just use it all the time now. It's a beautiful dark brick red, and it's warm, unlike a lot of dark reds. Alrighty, let's see here. Yeah, it's really, hi Jetta, I'm glad you like it. Yeah, all right. Yes, you're here to learn and to derail the artist. And it's really easy today because my tracking is not the best. Although I am pretty, pretty peppy. I mean, I've got energy. Um, so yeah, so beautiful raspberry colors. So this really depends now on what you want. If you are going to go for a really vibrant red over the top of this, then I would probably start... There are two ways you can start. Let's see. So first of all, we can equalize this, right? And do a 50-50 mix. Do a 50-50 of Succubus and Heraldic Red. So normally I would go for a pretty rich red and not go out into the violet, purple, pink uh, ranges, but we can show you all of it. Okay, so the difficulty with highlighting with one of these raspberry colors, which all contain white, because Runic Glow contains white, Runic Purple contains white, and of course this was a mixture of Succubus Kiss and Pure White. You can see how similar they all are. They're just a little bit off uh, from each other. But uh, the real issue is that Succubus Kiss has zero white in it, and so that's why it's a great, transparent, vibrant color. When you try to layer over the top of that with a color with white, it leaves brush strokes. Like it's really hard to, to get it to blend. Like you'd almost have to do it and put a wash of Succubus Kiss over the top and, and hope that that worked. Um, you get the same problem when uh, you highlight blues, actually. This is why blue is difficult to paint. And I did a thing on that on Twitch here for uh, pro tips the other day. So transparent colors are very difficult to highlight with white, but you uh, you can underpaint with white, or you can like start with a lighter white color and then put a glaze of a deeper color over the top of it, or a wash. But let's try to do a red. Normally I like really rich reds with this armor. I don't like to bleach it out too much. So let's go and just do this one. So we'll black in a little bit. I'm gonna leave a lot of Succubus Kiss in the cracks because I still want this color to come through. And I'm just going to highlight with a 50-50 mix of the red. Heraldic red and Succubus Kiss, remember. Let me get this bottom fringe. Right up there. And as you can see, the other trouble is, <clears throat> and you've all run into this with reds probably, is that when you start with a really dark red, it takes a lot of layers to build up a bright red over the top of that, right? Even this, which is a semi-dark red and covers okay, it's really like gonna take a while to bring this up. So we can cheat. So the way we cheat is by underpainting. Um, it's possible, Draconis. I'm more uh, trying to show you color. There we go. I'm talking and I'm not necessarily demoing paint, paint strokes, so I was not uh, getting close to the camera. Thanks for the reminder. So. I added a layer of highlighting, but it's really not really popping out. So if I want that to pop out more, I cheat by using white. Oh, oh John, no, you, you John. can keep doing that. That's perfect. <laughs> That's no problem. In All fact, of... go ahead and post it on both. Well, John, if, uh, if your friend base didn't know that you were a hopeless geek by now, they now know. <laughs> Oh, they, they knew, I promise. <laughs> John does not hide his geekdom. He's not a ge he's not in the closet geek. 
Well, that and like we're his primary friend group. This um, is true. I don't know yeah. how many other people read his Facebook truly. <laughs> Yeah, not so much, though, Chewy. Like, here, here's the magic, right? All right, so you're going to freak out, you know, a little bit when you do this because it looks, like, crazy. But if you really want bright red over dark red in minimum of layers, you actually have to paint it white first. So let's see if I can get this to work. So there's our mix of, let's do our 50, get our 50-50 mix when kind of thinned down in case I need a transition. So come here, a little white paint. Yes, pure white, Un Will, about one to one, actually, thinned about one to one. Because you want it to, uh... so let's just block it in. This is going to look so garish, and what are you doing? I could even thin it a little more. I'm gonna grab some Succubus Kiss and uh, blend it though. Just blend out that edge a little bit into pinky. Pinky land. It doesn't matter if it gets a little bit pinky. We're going to deal with it. So let me see here. Make sure I'm in focus. I keep falling down today. All right. So usually you want to kind of go horizontal on a layer you're trying to blend rather than vertical. If it's a long, thin area, you don't want to make your brush stroke long and thin or it's never going to blend. Do, do, do. So we're just hatching this in. A little bit on there. A little bit there. Let's get the rest of this. And then let's get this one over here. And a little bit up there. And let's see here. I'm just trying to keep up with chat here. Hold on. Cool spiel. Glad you're painting it. Hey, Miniatures Den. Thank you for uh, for rating us with 120 people. Wow. Hi, everybody. I'm Anne. I work for Reaper Miniatures. Um, for a long time, I created the Master Series paint line and mixed it by hand. Like, every batch that went out was mixed by me. Um, and then I uh, moved to California to be with my guy. And so now I am streaming and talking to people about the paint because I can still educate. So right now we're working with a color called Succubus Kiss, which came out in a set called Dungeon Dwellers. It's a beautiful, dark, kind of magenta-y red, kind of really that color right here. A little dark raspberry. But it's also really transparent. So I'm teaching people um, a few things about how to deal with that transparency. And one of the ways you can do that is by undercoating with white, which is very weird. But it works. So trust me here. Trust me, it works. So first of all, I'm just hashing in where I want my highlight to be with the white. And then I'm going to actually put some red over the top of it. So because we were trying to use this red and succubus kiss mixture to highlight the succubus kiss. But it, as anybody who has tried to paint um, brighter reds over darker reds knows, it takes forever to build up layers on that. So if you thin it first, it helps. So let me put a little bit of water into this. I'm probably got it about three to one, I want to say, paint to water at this point. And it is uh, a mixture, 50-50, of Succubus Kiss. Let me bring up my paints. Succubus Kiss and Heraldic Red. So those are your two, uh, those are your two colors that are mixed here for my highlight. Yes, welcome to the stream. All right, let's see here. All right. Oh, just checking. I had to check on, always checking on chat to make sure I'm not missing any questions. So let's take this mix then, which is a bit transparent. Uh, it's hard for you to see that. There we go. So you see how it's a little bit transparent. It's not fully opaque. And now we're going to go over the white with this same mixture, just like we were layering it straight onto the dark color, the succubus kiss itself. We're going to use the same brush stroke we would use. And we're just going to layer it in. And we're going to cover some of the succubus kiss outside of the white highlighting so that we can create a kind of blend. But see how that's coming up a lot faster? Like compared to trying to bring it up on these folds, this is like showing the red much, much faster. So, you know, one layer pretty much. Hey, Jacob, how are you doing? Hey, Jacob. You're playing lurky turkey. Do we need a lurking turkey um, emoji now? Planer? That would be kind of cool. Like a turkey rogue. But it might be too complicated for a tiny emoji. 
I do think we need a Reaper lurking emote, though. Reaper lurking? Like uh, Mr. Bones being sneaky? I think we need Mr. more Mr. Bones uh, emotes, personally. Emojis. All right. So, yeah. So, you can see now. Like, look. I just put one coat over that white. And compared to here, where I also put one coat, but over the succubus kiss, and you can hardly see it. But here, let me get the white, the glare off. So now you can see it here. And you still get a little bit of my brush strokes, but that's why I was kind of doing a cross brush stroke. That way, if you get a little texture, it's fine because you uh, you can just suggest a cloth texture or something like that. Um, and also, if you don't want the texture at all, you can throw a little more water into your red and do a second layer, and it'll still be plenty bright. Oh yeah, holiday set is only for holidays for the most part, Real Chibi. Um, I think like we brought it out, but I do think that there was a, uh, there's a finite point for that set, uh, and it will probably be back. Um, we can't really, we can't really vouch for that though, real chibi. Cause, uh, usually I know that in the past there was a, I think there was a year where we didn't bring out the holiday set. I can't remember. Justin, is that correct? I think it, um, you're referring to like the specific, uh, the holiday like colors. The holiday. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was um, one year we, we skipped it. Yeah. I can't remember the year we skipped it. I feel like we've had the last three years. Okay, well, maybe, maybe we didn't. But see, I felt we I thought we skipped it because it took a long time to sell out one of the years. But then uh, we brought uh, it back, and now we have so much more media penetration. So so maybe it should be back every year. I don't know. All right, so uh, let me try to get it. There we go. Yeah, that sort of thing. Like, we actually like were able to advertise it better, so it sold better. Because there was a time when Ed was talking about not doing it. But uh, but then it sold really well last year. So, all right. I put one layer of the same red right on these, and it hardly impacted them. I put one layer over the white here, and look at how hard it's impacted it. And it's almost blended. Like, it's it's actually a passable blend just with putting, like, one and a half. I thinned it a bit more. So, like, one and a half layers over the white. So this is a way to work with some of these dark transparent colors is just to, even though this looks horrible <laughs> when you first do it, like, look at it, it's just a big black of white, but because you're, you're underpainting, it's like, um, using bright, it's, it's why people tell you to use white primer. Like if you're doing a lot of light and bright colors, because they'll show lighter and brighter over a light base coat than a dark base coat. And it'll be a lot easier to get them to look, stay vibrant and look good. Whereas if you put them over a dark base coat or a black primer, then it naturally gives you shadows, but it also dulls down all your colors. So this is what you're doing. You're essentially doing just like, like Zenith highlighting does, you know, you, you prime black, you put a white spray over it to bring out detail. And then when you paint over those light details, it, it makes, uh, it helps you keep everything lighter. So this is just a hand applied, um, underpainting that we're doing to make these come out. And this is how I deal with blue as well. Um, the other option you could do is you could base coat with say heraldic red and you could shade with succubus because it is a great shadow for reds. So let's go and do that. I'm going to block that, that fold in, but you can just see it. Like that's a lot easier, fast and bright. And maybe you show some of the white underneath, but then you just need to hit it a second time real quick and you can blend it in. And remember, you do want to paint a little bit of this red mixture over the edge into the succubus kiss, not just over the white. Um, and that helps to disguise your brush strokes. So, but yeah, so that is a easy way to get, to deal with this sort of transparent color when you need to highlight um, lighter colors on top of darker, but still have them blend in. So let's try to like use uh, Succubus Kiss as a shadow now. Let's get some pure heraldic red and we'll also use one of these awesome pinks and purples that we mixed. Yeah, Drow Silver, uh, the purple metallic is a nice uh, counterpoint for Skeleton Key, which is one of the earlier uh, greenish metallics in uh, Dungeon Dwellers. Maybe we'll do a bit of, maybe I'll do a bit more on Dungeon Dwellers. But yeah, I've wanted to do a purple silver for a while. So that was one of the last colors that I suggested to Sadie, I think, before I left. So I'm glad to see that it's uh, coming out. But yeah, I mean, color metallics can be very interesting. Oh, I need a little bit more, a little bit more paint in my mix. I got a little thin on my, I washed these, but I did get a little thin on my mix here for my base coat. So it's beading up. So let's do half of this cape in red. So 
So the way you base coat red is also going to uh, kind of change the way that it looks in the end. Um, it's going to be, a, if you start with a middle or vibrant or bright red, man, this stuff is just, just wanting to not stick today. So apparently I need to go full strength. Apparently I put too much water in it, period. Usually after I wash, wash bones, I don't have a problem with this, but maybe it's bones black because it is a, a, a harder plastic. Um, I do this all the time for competition minis, Max Styles. Like I do it. In fact, I, it's, it's, I'm t stealing it directly from competition minis. Um, I, uh, I always underpaint textures like my, my crystal brush entry for, um, last year, all of the cloth texture is underpainted multiple times and then glazed over with different colors. So underpainting is something that I reach for like constantly in, uh, I, I really feel that it is the way to get fine textures on a mini. You can layer them on too, but I think underpainting is, uh, is a secret sneaky trick to doing it. So yeah, I'm, I am a big underpainter. I use it a lot. So, all right. So now let's put on our little raspberry here. This is uh, runic glow with our succubus kiss. You can see how different the color is. Once you add more magenta, you can, so you can slide it either way, right? You can slide it like this color more red, or you can slide it more purple. I really like this raspberry color. We're going two tone with this draw. We're going to see which color combo we like better. Alrighty, so let's get that sucker on there. Hey, Anara. Yeah, well, I started this one on, uh, I started this one Monday. I did the armor on Monday. So I was doing a dark steel NMM, like for a drow. And then today I am uh, showing people how to work with Succubus Kiss, which is one of the Dungeon Dwellers paints, which is this one. It's a beautiful dark magenta -y red. And, uh, it's also very transparent. So there are some tricks for working with it that make it much more easy to work with. So I'm showing them that. That is what we are doing today. Yeah, she's a, she's a cool, cool mini. It's a nice, clean sculpt by Bobby Jackson. Huh? Ten, that 10 minute wait to chat after a raid? Oh, is, is that a thing? I didn't know that. Yeah, it's after... Um, nice it's, to meet you, Dead Lodar. you follow. Oh, right, 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 right. Well, nice to meet you, Dead Lodar. Yes, thank you for hanging around. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, working with Master Series Paint, which is the paint line I created for Reaper. I worked for Reaper. I've worked for Reaper for seven, over 17 years now. Uh, my 17th year anniversary was April 1st. And 15 of those years were creating the Master Series Paint line for Reaper. So that's what, even though I've now moved out to the West Coast to be with my, my boyfriend, I am uh, still working for Reaper and I'm doing streaming and uh, Patreon and all that stuff. But uh, every morning... Uh, around 11.30 Central U.S. time, I get on and pretty much talk about paint. So yeah, if you're interested uh, in painting in general or in Reaper Master Series, I do, I'm a high level, fairly high level painter um, as far as it, I do competition work and all that. So like one of my other guys I was working on is this bust here. So you can kind of see how I blend and layer just an example of some of my larger work. I really like working on bigger models uh, these days. I find them fun and rewarding, so... So yeah, so that's an example. I, I, I know I'm painting fast for the stream, so I always like to like show like, hey guys, I can actually paint. <laughs> Instead of painting half of a cape purple and half of a cape red, really, really, I don't normally paint like this. Uh, but yeah, so I uh, that said, even though I am an international award winner, I do actually really enjoy teaching people who are new to the hobby. Um, I really feel like it's the only way to keep our hobby going and growing, so... Awesome. So there we go. Let's get this sucker with a hot, with more base coat, more base coat. And then we can like try to do shading with uh succubus kiss on both and we'll see which one we like. Okay. Nice solid base coat. Excellent. <laughs> She's definitely suffering from two tone Cape. She couldn't make a decision. Um, it really depends, Francis, on that. If there is a thin film of color on the inside of the bottle at the top, it's probably just pigment float. Um, it depends on how long that color has been sitting, uh, as far as whether it's possible to integrate. Um, 
it, you probably shouldn't worry if it's just a really thin film. Some pigments are more prone to separating than others uh, because their dispersion is just like really high and they tend to settle in and out faster. Uh, some of the phthalos are like that. So I wouldn't worry too much about it as long as the color, you know, shake the color really well. As long as you can hear the bead rattle and you know that the base is, uh, is integrated and the consistency of the paint seems to be okay, you should be just fine. Um, I was just thinking about doing a feature on my Patreon about that, Inara. But I can also work with, uh, some of the monster colors, uh, can't, okay, so so tell me in our uh, specific, be specific here. Why can't you get re good results? Is it coverage? Is it just the color is off and you're not sure what to put with it? Is uh, talk to me, talk to me, tell me what's wrong with the monster colors, and I will try to troubleshoot here on stream for you. If it's stuck to the bottle, Francis, then it probably settled out and might have dried there just from air leaking into the bottle, especially if it sat for a very long time. But that small of a pigment, I would not worry. Hello, Rax. All right. So yeah, Inara, tell me, tell me about the monster colors. Let's troubleshoot. I'm going to get some succubus kiss here and start shading this red. This is why, and I mentioned this, actually, I should have mentioned this, uh, because I think Sethany actually asked me in my, um, in my discord, asked me about shaking paint. So the single thing that you can do to keep your Master Series paint good for years and years and years is to shake it every year or two. Like shake, shake each bottle at least once a year or once every two years. Shake it thoroughly so you can hear the bead rattle so that you know it's in solution. This is going to keep your paint good for like over a decade. Doesn't cover well. I have to lay down four coats to get it non-streaky and that's after using a shaker. Interesting. Well, I guess I will start working on... Is it like Kobold? Is it Troll? Is it Orc? Is it Ogre? Is it all of the above? I wonder... I'm just wondering. Because Streaky is odd. Because some of those monster colors are using really high coverage pigments. So, can I ask, did you order it in the winter? And did you get it straight from Reaper, Inara? Because like the... Some of those, I know the ogre skin is like very high coverage pigments. I thought the kobold was too. The bottles do have a bead. Um, image of a trail, every bottle should have a bead. And uh, it's, uh, sometimes the bead is the same color as the paint, or sometimes the paint is too viscous and you just can't see the bead. Um, so, uh, but it's there. We put an agitator in every bottle because we just don't want you to have to break your arm shaking. Uh, and an agitator just helps with all of that. Got them swag bags at the con. Interesting. Well, then you did get them direct from us and they didn't freeze. Weird. All right. Well, I will give those a try because I was going to work with them anyway because I have them all. And uh, let me play with that. See if I get similar results or if, if, if I do, if there's a fix or what. So I'm doing some shading with succubus and just some, I've got it thinned down to about probably two to one paint to water. So you don't need a pit to thin. The nice thing about transparent colors, if you're going to use them as shadows is you do not need to thin them nearly as much because they're already naturally transparent. So you can just thin them a little bit, still get pretty, pretty decent uh, coverage. Like uh, if I put it over my, you can see it's there, it's thin, right? But it's there, but you can uh, layer it into shadows really easily. Yeah, I'll check that out, Inara. Thanks for the heads up. Yeah, there shouldn't... If your paint hasn't been sitting very long, there should not be clumps at all. If there are clumps, you're dangerously close to uh, losing your paint. Because what happens with paint is that the resins, which is like, you know, the acrylic, latex, vinyl, you know, synthetic vinyl, whatever they're using, um, those resins that essentially give the paint body and help fix the pigment in place and also can give you coverage will settle out over time. So that's why I say that shaking is the single most important thing you can do to keep your paint alive. Because you need to keep those resins in solution. It's even more important to keep the resins in solution than to keep the pigment in solution. Because the resins are the big blocky chunks. And once those suckers settle out, if they settle out for long enough and make clumps, as you say, 
they do not want to go back in solution. Like you might get them temporarily back in solution with really vigorous shaking, but you'll see them fall out again right after it. And at that point, your paint is kind of screwed. Yeah, if you've got a lab shaker, then you've got serious, um, then you've got serious shaker, chef. So that, that can put, since that's how paint is put into solution in the first place, if you've got something heavy duty like that, then that will work. Uh, it, but most people don't have access to that sort of stuff. And so, uh, and even then I find sometimes the, if the pigments have settled out and bonded to, or if, sorry, if the resins have settled out and bonded together, even then you're really just not going to come, they're not going to come back. Buy a new bottle at that point. Has been my experience. But usually you only see that in paint that's been let sit for like, you know, seven, eight, ten years. Some brands will settle out a lot easier than others. The heavier the resin, the faster the paint will settle out of solution and start to make a vinyl or a vinylish plug at the bottom of the bottle. Yeah, I mean, brush on sealer, the thing is that the matting agent in that will settle out because it is a lot heavier than the base. So, yeah, it should... Uh, you should be able to get that one back in solution. That's a little different from the resin settling out, though. But yeah, so shaking. Like, with um, with Reaper, while I was making paint, I'd flip every paint at least once a year. Like, meaning I'd have to make a fresh batch of every color. Even the ones that didn't sell as fast. Once a year. Um, and uh, I, my, I have bottles on there that were from original batch 15 years ago, and they're still good. Raw Partha from 25 years ago. Yeah. So essentially, Orion, what you can do about that, if they're really thick, you need to add some water um, and shake them up. I'd probably add an agitator to each bottle, add a few drops of water and shake them like the bejesus. <laughs> shake them like bejeebus. I would, uh... And then the problem with the Partha paints is that since they're in pots, is you may find that they get gritty after time. Because every time you take that pot on and off, you're kind of grinding some grit that tends to fall into the paint because of the threads there, and it gets they get paint in them inevitably. Um, so I found there was definitely a shelf life to all my pot paints that had screw on tops for that reason. So all right, so we have used Succubus Kiss as a nice shader on this red. You can see how nice and subtle that is. So that's another... Well, you can do it. Now, it doesn't, obviously, it does not give you the same result as doing this. Let's actually put a layer of this pure heraldic red over our previous layer here. And Thank I can you show you the difference. Thank you, for the uh, sub, by the way. Oh, who did we get? Who did we get? Ford. For Thank you. For four months. Thank you for watching me for that long. Or Reaper for that long. May not be me. May not have watched me before. But I really appreciate it. We always say a sub for the show is a vote for the show. And we keep track of our subs and they're going to, um, they lead up to AMA sessions where I just answer everybody's questions. So if you have a question for me during any of this that, you know, just general question, uh, go pop it onto the discord under, is it questions for Anne? Is that what they call that now, Justin? I think, or AMA questions. I think it's questions for Anne. Let me see. They've changed the title so many times that I've just lost track. It's it's a an AMA. Oh, an AMA. Okay, so on our Discord, which you should join anyway because it's a nice community, um, there is an an AMA channel, and you can pop your questions for me in there. It can be about working for Reaper. It can be about the paint line and how I mix the paints or paint chemistry. Um, it can be about my dog. It can be about anything. And uh, then when we hit our sub goal then we will do an AMA. We'll schedule it at that point. And that the AMAs are all available afterwards as well as just like normally like VODs and uh, YouTube videos. So you can always just go watch if you missed it. And I get to, I get through as many questions as I can every AMA. So there we go. So, all right, here's the difference now. Oh, okay, cool. You've been watching. Well, yay. Happy. Yeah. Lurking. I know everybody's got to lurk. A lot of people watch me while they work, while they work, and that's fantastic. Uh, glass bead, nail polish. Yes, gl yeah, glass beads. We use volcanic glass, Orion Noir, Noir, which is a little bit higher mineral content. We haven't had that problem. But then I wasn't using an automatic nail polish shaker either. Um, yeah, be careful on stainless steel bearings. Just be so careful. If they are not a high-quality stainless steel, they will corrode and they will ruin your paint. I have, I have heard bad tales of this 
So um, hopefully if there are, I think Army Painter puts out a packet of them. Uh, hopefully those are high enough quality that you won't have to worry about it. Because good stainless steel really won't corrode. Like, yeah, you're right. You could use it. Um, but I've had people like use BBs or something in there or things that were re be repackaged BBs and they, <laughs> they rusted very quickly and destroyed their paint. So just be careful what you use for an agitator, guys. That's why we use volcanic glass. It is completely non-reactive. Um, different things that can corrode will give, you know, will enter chemically into your paint and may change your paint for not the good, not the better. So, all right. Um, yeah, I mean, we used to do, uh, actually, I just did this. Huh? I just found, actually, we used to sell these at cons, skulls. So, uh, I actually still have a bottle of skulls from when we used to sell these as paint agitators. Um, so yeah, because our metal is like mostly tin, like overwhelmingly tin and tin really doesn't react, um, to, to water. So it's, yeah, it's fine. You can use skeleton heads. Just don't use lead ones. Yep. Little bits of metal sprue. Everything now, the white metal mixes are mostly tin. So you're pretty safe with that. All right, so the difference here. Here we started with heraldic red and we shaded down to succubus kiss, right? Let me just add a little bit more down here, up here in the shadow. And then on the other side, we started with succubus kiss and layered up. So you can see the difference in the result that you get, right? Because I've used, I've, I've now added a layer of heraldic red on top of all of this. But you can see how much darker this red looks than this red even though i'm mostly using the same kind of surface like i'm building up you know i'm building up my uh succubus kiss so that it's got pretty broad shadows on this red so the surfaces aren't that different but starting with the darker color got me a darker red so and this is using exactly the same colors between the two exactly the same colors and that's the difference so what you, with reds and other transparents, the color you start with, the lightness of the color you start with will impact your final uh, result. Now I could turn this into this if I did a heavy wash of succubus kiss over the entire surface, essentially knocked down all these bright reds a level and then brought my highlights back in. Then I would have this essentially matching this. Um, but you know, just doing it normally, layering normally, this is the difference that it will give you. And this is true of transparent paints, not necessarily of all paints. Paints with good coverage won't give you this difference. Then the only difference will be how much area you're actually taking up with your shading and highlighting and base coat, what I call surface control. But it's much easier, you know, you get a darker red when you start with the darker color is essentially what it comes down to. Even if you take that same dark color and you add your shadows and more shadows and all of this. Like I'd have to, I'd have to take down this red a bit. Awesome, Kerniko. I'm glad that it, your mileage, your mileage may vary with that trick, but in general it does work. So awesome. Yeah. White undercoat for highlights. Do it. Try it out. Blues and reds, especially. It also can work for really bright yellows. Uh, Cause I like to start yellows with um, like a yellow ochre. So like Palomino gold. And then put yellow over it. So if you find that you started um, with something like orangey or ochre and you want it to go up to a bright yellow, again, underpaint with white, put your bright yellow over the top for your highlights. And it works really well with all the transparent colors. So yellow, of course, being kind of a see-through highlight anyway, um, is natural for this sort of trick, the underpainting trick. I'm going to put a tiny shadow in here. Just noticed it. So why don't I put a wash over this back area and see if I can get it to the same level as that. I probably won't be able to get it this dark. Oh yeah, Mal Malkadon. Yep, that's, uh, that's actually how a lot of us get better is uh, because the camera shows you all of your problems um, but it also shows you all of your problems so you can fix them. So, uh, when I was really trying to get better, when I was trying to get to like a competition level so I could compete at Gen Con, 
um, or a, you know, and try to try to win, you know, top level honors at places. I would uh, take my take my photos and really study them and try to see, you know, how where were my weaknesses and then try to fix them. So my goal was to be able to look at a picture of my model that was, I think, 450 pixels wide and not see brush strokes when I was trying to do good layering, good blending, things like that. Making little goals for yourself is like, okay, when I look at this picture, I want to see this, or I don't want to see this. So I added a little brush on sealer here to my, uh, to a, a succubus kiss wash, essentially, to see if I could drop this cape down to the level of my front uh, example. I might have to do a couple layers, I almost certainly will. So essentially I'm trying to get to this the opposite way by starting light and working dark. Yeah, if you see blotchiness, then probably thin your paint a little bit more. Also concentrate on the brush strokes, like the way you're applying the paint. Like if you use a vertical brush stroke on a big, light, big long surface like this that is itself vertical, you will see your brush strokes. That's why I was doing a sideways stroke on the front. Like there. You can see that I did a sideways stroke here because it's a long, thin fold. So work on your brush strokes if you want good layering. Brush stroke direction. Pay attention to it. It's important. People never talk to you about it except for me. I talk about it all the time, but um, it is really important. So one thing this did is it made our red actually a bit richer, a less, a little less one dimensional. Like now that I've layered succubus kiss over it, it actually, uh, it added a little bit of a blue purpley, um, note to it. It deepened our shadows. Uh, and now it's looking a little closer to this still lighter overall. Like I'd have to continue. I probably have to hit it with one more wash in order to get it to go down to this. And I probably even then I wouldn't quite be the same. Um, just cause it's just, it's, uh, it's the white paper versus the black paper. It's, uh, just how your paint tends to. And what it is, is it's the transparency of the paint and the, and the ground color of what you started with. So light is passing through these layers differently than it's passing through these layers because this just started with a completely different base coat. And that's, that's going to stop light. Um, a lot harder than this bright transparent one. So you're getting a lot of vibrancy here still that you wouldn't get necessarily here just because of your base coat color. So that's a little, a little paint chemistry light, light lesson for you there. It's why artists like, you know, like white paper a lot because they can get truer color or brighter vibrant color easier. Um, starting with a darker paper just gives you a totally different totally different surface just because of the color which is why they make toned papers as well and by toned I mean you know grayed or beige or something like that um, a lot of artists will use those because it gives them softer colors because it's generally giving a slight muting effect if you're using like colored pencil which is my favorite uh, 2d medium if I have to do drawing all of these days it's Hard to convince myself. Yeah, it's black paper versus white paper, real chibi. It, it's the same sort of thing because you're all of these mediums. Even though acrylic paint is is high coverage, it's still light is still passing through this surface. Like because I'm using such, I'm using thinned layers, right? So light is still passing through and bouncing off of this surface, and so it's going to function. You know, light is what it is and acts the way it acts. And colored pencil is also not opaque. It is also translucent because it's pigment in a wax medium, typically wax binder. So you're even there. You're dealing with um, we're dealing with that, and and it's that translucency and that interaction of light that gives you vibrancy of color. It's why using inks can give you brighter colors than paint because they're more see-through. They're more transparent naturally. I'm going to bring up a highlight a little bit more here with pure heraldic. Yeah, I like medium. Or I, like a, I like a light gray uh, often. I like the uh, Tamiya Fine Surface Primer light gray primer. I know a lot of people uh, swear by the gray sear gray primer that GW has now. I haven't been able to use, to try it because uh, the last time I tried to get a can, it was always sold out. 
Um, but, uh, but yeah, I like gray primer in general. Uh, it gives you, I think light gray primer gives you the best of all worlds. It's not quite white, so it gives you a little bit more complexity, but it's close enough to, to white that it doesn't fight your light colors. So now we're bringing that up and we're knocking that down. And as I knock this down and as I highlight this up, they get closer and closer together. But you can see the difference in the starting. So I, I, if I had chosen not to knock this down, I could have gotten a much brighter red out of this just with a heavy shadow of succubus kiss so another coat you can see how rich that makes that color so succubus kiss is just beautiful over reds in general for shading reds in general or glazing over them if you want if you think your red is too flat and you want a more rich red um, this is a fantastic color to use for that sort of thing as you can see it really uh really makes my red like rich and awesome it's a nice evil red right it's got purple shadows uh, I don't know if I know with the empty dropper bottles, I thought they came with agitators, but I don't think we just sell agitators. If you pick up volcanic glass beads, Margaret, you can use those. Um, as I mentioned earlier, some companies also sell uh, stainless steel um, uh, agitators. Just, you know, as long as they're high quality enough, you're good with that. Never use like BBs because they're lower quality steel and uh, will rust even though they're cheap or, um, and I don't know, I would, I don't think I would use like pure lead either, like fishing weights. That would just kind of seem to be not a good idea. And for all I know these days, fishing weights are not made with lead because of the toxicity issues. When I was a kid, they were lead guys, but everybody thought lead was great when I was a kid. Pencil lead still were real lead. All right. So there we go. So kind of talking to you a lot about red in general, talking to you about succubus kiss, how you can use it as a base coat and make it work. And also that it's a great, um, a great color to use to make reds more rich. If you put a light wash or glaze of it over the top of them, you can get a beautiful, look how vibrant and beautiful this red is. Like I just, I adore this, this kind of treatment on red. Uh, I think it's a great great evil red but it's also a great like fire wizard or sorceress red you know anytime you need this sort of um deep like dark shadows but but almost like red velvet effect i used to do my red almost all like this um with a really dark i would start with an almost uh, brown purple base coat and then i would just go up but that was before i knew about under undercoating so it would take me nine layers uh to get the red up to where i wanted it so Let's see. Yeah, Malkadon, um, what you'll notice if you do try like stuff like P3 or Reaper or a higher priced um, paint is that usually you will get just uh, um, higher pigmentation. You, If you start to do thinned paint applications, that's where I think that you really notice it because most craft paint will not hold together when it's thinned. They use a very cheap base for it, which is why they can charge just you know that, that price for that amount. Um, and they usually do not have high pigmentation. So it really depends on if you're just, if you're, if you're painting for gaming, craft paint are probably going to be just fine. And I do know really good painters who used craft paints for years and got really good results for them. So it's up to you, um, what you want to try. I always recommend that people try a high quality paint simply because I find that the downside of craft paints, when you're trying to get better, can lead to frustration. And I am the painter to tell you, uh, don't frustrate yourself. You know, I really want people to love painting. And whenever frustration ends, enters into the picture, then I'm, I'm like, oh no, it's because that's what makes people stop painting. So if you ever feel frustrated with craft paints, do try, do give, give our paint a try. I will, I will say that. I mean, I have a shameless plug for Master Series. I spent 15 years making Master Series for Reaper, so I have to plug my paint line, right? Um, if you do order from Reaper ever, uh, often they'll give you a free sample color in the... Uh, in the order, although we were so busy for so long for a while there that we weren't. But I said, I just uh, saw somebody say they got a free paint bottle in their order the other day. So maybe we're doing samples again. It's not a guarantee. It's just something we try to do whenever we have time for the free samples. All right. So that's a really nice, rich red color. Love it. So I would probably even take this up to a bit of orange just to get it a little extra pop because I like that look. But you, you're, if you can also just take it up toward a pinkish color, you could add a little bit of white and bring it up just a little bit more. Uh, if you want a faded hem, like she does have some some ragged hem here going on. There's uh, 
it's a couple little notches down there in the hem to make it look like this is worn. Then what I usually do is mix uh, my favorite color for fading out dusty hem edges is driftwood brown. It's a great dust color, 9162. You can mix it with red and you're going to get a kind of a brownish pink, but it makes it really makes it look like faded red cloth. So that that color driftwood very very good for that for weathering and fading. All right. Oh yeah, hematite. That's great. Yeah, they are expensive, but they are heavy and they are totally non-reactive. So great call, Krispies. All right. Yeah, little glass beads is just fine. Do do do. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, if you if you're using a glass bead, you're good. You can put that in your paint, no problem. All right, guys. Any any other questions? The other thing I would recommend to do with succubus kiss, by the way is that it makes great um, skin tone like lip and blush colors. So let's grab, let's grab like skin color. Let's grab youthful flesh, maybe your bright skin. Yeah, well, you, well youthful flesh is closer to summer. So one of my favorite skin colors, uh, 9445 youthful flesh, but you really can use it with anything. And for all, all the time, if you're trying to paint a natural blush or lip color, i.e. not lipstick, um, I always say mix a little bit of a dark red into your skin tone and it'll give you a lip color that matches your skin tone. You can also use succubus uh, kiss for this. So like four drops of the skin tone. Yeah, essentially Francis, um, I will, if I'm going to make a faded, a faded cloth, you still need a little bit of that original cloth color to get that faded effect. Cause you know, like reds, when they get really faded and worn, they go pink. So that's what you're doing by mixing this into your red and it'll give you a lighter and a little bit brown uh, pink and then that looks natural because you've still got a little bit of your your color you know like this red that I used to highlight I still have a little bit of that in my mix of driftwood so it goes together it looks natural that's really important all right so one drop of succubus kiss and four drops of bright skin gives you a very pretty blush color that would go well on bright skin. So let me get that over here, get it in focus. There. So you, one drop of succubus kiss gives you a very delicate color. And here's the, here's the skin color I started with. So that's one to four. So that would obviously make a very subtle blush color. It would make a nice color for like noses. You know, if your nose is a little pinker, usually earlobes, um, blush colors, it might not be quite strong enough for lips though. So then I might go two to one. Uh, skin color plus succubus. And that would give you a color more like this. And that would also be a fine blush or lip or nose color. And it will go just fine with the bright skin because it has bright skin in it. So that's what I usually recommend when it comes down to doing blush or lip colors that are not lipstick. That's something that you want something that's going to look natural. Um, and I use various reds for this. Um, Amadeus, Asmodeus Red, uh, Succubus Kiss, um, actually Reaper Deep Red 9002 is my favorite go-to for that. Mahogany Brown works for that. All of those colors work great for making lip and blush colors. All righty. Cool. Thanks, Tommy. I'm glad. I'm glad you learned a lot. That is my goal is to spread the knowledgeness. Yeah, pick up a couple, like, Yotun Wolf, uh, if you haven't, just pick up, like, pick up our white and our black, and, like, one of the reds, like, Heraldic Red, or, um, or in the Pathfinder line, as Asmodeus, or, um, I do like Heraldic, just as a good middle grade red, um, something like that. If you like dark reds, pick up Dragon Red 9401, uh, some of the other colors, I use so many Bones and Pathfinder colors at this point, um, I can't even begin... I mean, my favorite purple, if you want to try a nice purple, is runic purple. It's great. Uh, I could go on and on about, about colors that are... Well, that that has to be the and set, right? The and set of recommended paint colors. Um, also, if you want to buy into Master Series to try them out seriously, but you don't want to buy a ton of paint, um, the starter set that we sell is 11 colors, I think. And it's a great... That 11 color set, so it's you know around 40 bucks, I think. And uh, it's a good mixture of colors. It's actually colors that I chose. I actually created that set. So I all I feel all those colors are quite useful. So that would be a way to get your foot wet if you wanted to, you know, kind of try our paint and see if you liked it. Indeedy. You are welcome, Kurniko. 
The bright red on the end is heraldic red, 9402 Inara. This one. It looks darker in the bottle than it does on the palette. It's actually quite a vibrant red, but it's got just a little bit of green in it, and I think a touch of black, but like a minuscule touch. So it's a, it's a really nice softened red, a little bit darker. Oh, okay. You want the whole line. Well, I can't do anything for that. <laughs> But it makes me happy that you want the whole line. It always makes me happy when somebody tries the paint and they're like, oh my gosh, this stuff is great. And I'm like, yay, I did good. Right? When you put 15 years of your life into making something, it's always nice to hear that, that when a new person discovers it, you, they still think it's awesome. Uh, yeah. Yep. That's what I use. Obviously, Tristoma. I've got my reading glasses on. Yeah, it depends on your eyes, right? If your eyes are uneven, like... Um, then if, if you've got a lot of difference between one eye and the other, I think prescription reading glasses for painting is a good idea. I went to the eye doctor actually to look into that, but uh, these work just fine. My eyes are really close together. Yeah, no problem, Inara. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, the armor is what we did Monday, Achilles Blade. So if you uh, missed the stream on Monday, you can tune in. Oh, oh, get down there. There we go. You can tune in and see how I do this. And I talk a lot about NMM and just using, uh, this is uh, using blue liner plus, I think I used a drop of Ezrin blue or one of my dark blues. Or no, ultramarine. It was ultramarine. So it's blue liner plus ultramarine and then highlighted up by adding uh, increments of white. Yeah, indeedy. Yeah. Oh, and yes, if you play Pokemon Go, um, we are we are building a Reaper community, the Reaper Pokemon Go community. Um and then we have a Pokemon Friends uh, uh, channel on the Discord. So we're putting our, our numbers in there if you guys want to join us playing Go. Um, I'm very happy now. I'm, I only had three friends for the longest time, and now I have 16. I'm super happy. I have, I have lots of presents to send out. Yeah, they, the Vallejo, remember that the Vallejo range was originally a historical range. So they have a lot of gray, blues, grays, browns, and, and olive greens and things like that that are really useful for mis military historical. And and yeah, because of that, they don't have maybe as many like purples, right? So, um, and then yeah, Scale 75 has a whole bunch of different ranges. I really like their artist tubes. Um, I'm playing around with that. If I had a, if Master Series disappeared off the face of the earth, well, I would cry. But uh, I would probably um, try to get Scale 75's Artist Range, uh, the ones in the tubes. I find that in finish, though you have to work with them more because they're tube paint, right? So you do need to add a lot more water to get them to workable. Um, but they, uh, the finish is similar to our paint. All right. I always mix some, um, maybe I'm wrong, but when I've, when I've tried out uh, um, GW paint in the past, I've always mixed Master Series with it because I think it makes it better. Am I bad? <laughs> I'm terrible. Uh, but yeah. All right. Yeah, we're about to go to Shadow Raven. It was good to have you in the stream. Everybody, thank you for coming. Do we have a do we have a raid, Justin? Yes, we do. Awesome. Who are we raiding? Uh, we will be raiding just Dysus. All right, cool. It's good to have Dysus around. Fantastic. Yeah, I saw a scale scale seventy five just ran. It's the contrast paints, Nomad Zeke. Yep. All right. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go. You guys have a great day. I will be back tomorrow. I'll figure out what I'm going to do for tomorrow. We'll see. We'll just, we'll just leave it up to fate. All right. You guys have a great day. Absolutely. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk Keep to you later. Keep being awesome, guys. Don't forget to use those uh, Reaper raid uh, emojis and uh, tell Dysus we said hi. Spread the Reaper love. Um, otherwise, we will see you guys tomorrow morning for more Ann. See you guys.